So, what is a health system and why does it matter? Welcome to Transforming Health Systems. This is the first episode of the Health Systems Transformation Channel dedicated to health systems and how to strengthen them to improve health and life of people around the world. I am Cristian Baeza and I have a lifelong passion for strengthening health systems. If you are passionate about health systems, join me in this journey of improving health systems around the world. Subscribe, welcome and see you in a moment. In this first episode, I'd like to introduce you to what are health systems, why do they matter, and how do they actually work. At the end of the episode, I will also provide you additional information on what is coming next and the way I would like to invite you to work together. So, what is a health system? The country health system includes all the activities whose main objective or primary intent is to promote, restore, and or maintain good health of individuals and the population, including addressing the health needs of those with disabilities. This includes leadership, people, financing, organizations, institutions, policies, and more across all industries in private and public organizations. This is a much broader definition than the traditional perception that health systems are mostly about healthcare. It means that any activity that is primarily intended to promote, restore, and maintain health in any sector or industry is part of the health system. This may include many activities not traditionally seen under the health system's leadership, such as road safety, health-related water policy, school feeding, and much more. This broader definition of health systems means that health leaders are responsible not only for health care, but they are accountable for the health outcomes and health systems goals beyond healthcare into multiple sectors and policies. Ministers and secretaries of health of a country no longer are ministers of healthcare. They need to be ministers of health outcomes. It is a major challenge for the traditional roles of ministries of health in most countries around the world. Sometimes health systems is used to refer to a large healthcare provider network. We will use health systems in the broader definition, usually in the context of a country system or a very large comprehensive subnational level system. Why systems matter? Whether a health system works or it doesn't matters a great deal. The way a health system runs drives success or failure of a country in ensuring equitable access to health care, the capacity of a country to respond to population health emergencies or the capacity of the country to influence policies that impact health outcomes overall. Let's look at two examples. One in healthcare, performance in access to neonatal services, and one in responding to population health emergencies, the devastating COVID-19 pandemic we are suffering at the time of this episode. Let's look, for example, at high-income countries' results, neonatal mortality which indicates the proportion of newborn children who die before 28 days of age. Although not all neonatal mortality is driven by the health sector, it is nevertheless a good indicator of access to quality health care. As you can see, there are very significant differences in neonatal mortality across high-income countries. The United States has four times more neonatal than Finland. Access to prenatal and neonatal health care is likely to be very different for Finnish and U.S. populations. And this difference cannot be explained by the amount of money countries expend in healthcare alone. As you can see in the chart on the right, the United States spends more than double than Finland in healthcare and still gets far worse neonatal mortality. But the differences are not only in healthcare results. Let's look at country results in handling the devastating impact of the current COVID-19 pandemic, the worst global public health shock we have experienced in more than a century. Comparing the results so far as of July 2020, in containing contagion 
trends among the United States, Italy, and South Korea. What is important in this comparison is how fast after the outbreak of the initial cases the country had been able to bend the curve and begin reducing contagion and spread of the disease. Korea was able to have a fast and effective response that shows in a rapid controlling of the spread of the disease, probably the best practice worldwide so far. Italy faced one of the worst outbreaks, but it has been able to bend the curve and daily cases have gone down steadily since day 40 of the outbreak. The United States, in contrast, not only has been incapable of bending the curve, but after two months of very high new case numbers, contagion is accelerating rapidly. These are very different results in managing COVID-19 that reflect very different public and population health capabilities among these three countries. What explains these differences? To a large extent, among comparable economies, they are substantially explained by differences in the performance of their health systems. Health systems drive health care and the capacity to respond to public health shocks such as COVID-19. So health systems do make a difference, but how does the health system work? To discuss how do they work, I will be using a health systems framework to systematically review the way health systems work and what citizens expect them to achieve. Health system framework is a way to present the organization and functioning of health systems. There are many useful frameworks besides the one we will be using in THS. Health systems frameworks are a source of much controversy and debate among academics. However, system frameworks are not a major focus of attention or controversy among actual practitioners and policymakers in the front lines. In THS, we will be using a health framework inspired by those developed by the World Health Organization and its World Health Report 2000, the World Bank in its strategy in 2007, and many other substantial contributions from around the world. Full disclosure, I was deeply involved in developing those frameworks, which I continue to use for the last 20 years of work globally. There are two key dimensions in any analysis of health systems. First, the objectives of the health system, disease. What does society expect from the system to be achieved? And second, the system itself, its components or functions, and how they are organized and interact to achieve results. A well-functioning health system should be able to achieve the objectives through ensuring equitable, timely, and effective access to quality and affordable necessary health care and population health services for all. Although we will review each of them in detail in next episodes, let's examine briefly both objectives and the system's components as a preview of what will be coming. Societies expect health systems to achieve at least four objectives. First, to contribute to good health for individuals and to the entire population in an equitable manner. Second, to do so ensuring effective financial protection related to health, disease, that the system would protect people from the financial effects of health shocks, such as disease or accidents on others, both preventing excess payments for health services and providing income replacement for lost income during sickness. Third, to respond to the legitimate expectations of the population in their interactions with the system as citizens, patients, and our consumers. And fourth, to do all these in a way that ensures both long-term sustainability and it contributes to the long-term socioeconomic development and global competitiveness of the country. Clarity about the objectives or goals are critical for any successful transformation. Without it, how do we know what is success and whether we are getting there? Without clarity about the goals, how does society ensure accountability for promises and performance? We do health systems transformation to improve health, financial protection, responsiveness, or sustainability. If we cannot demonstrate that the transformation actually does that, there is no reason for it. I believe it was Albert Einstein who said more than 70 years ago, perfection of means and confusion of goals seems to be a characterization of our age. Unfortunately, too often, system transformations reforms or strengthening efforts rapidly shift to making technical implementation of one or more aspects of it, the goal of itself. Let's now review also 
the systems components as a preview of what's coming in next episodes. In any health system, we can identify critical components or functions. In THS, I will distinguish seven distinctive components or functions. First, stewardship, or the leadership function of the system. It plays a critical role in defining the overall direction of a system through policies, regulations, and leading the health sector dialogue, as well as a health outcomes dialogue with other sectors of the economy. The difficulties of the United States in effectively responding to the population health demands of the pandemic, including testing, case tracing, and policy response coordination, are almost entirely driven by a very weak stewardship function. Second, the financing function. It includes the way the health system is funded, known as revenue collection, the way it aggregates the funding, known as the risk pooling in the health system, at the core of health insurance coverage, and the way the system uses the funding to pay for health care and population health services, known, when done correctly, as strategic purchasing. Third, health service provision, which includes all the arrangements to directly provide health care services and population health services and interventions. Service provision is the core of health systems, as it is in general the point of first contact with the system and the one that actually delivers the services to individuals and populations. It includes all private and public provision, such as primary health care, hospital care, preventive programs, and much more. Fourth, patients and populations. Although they are not a function or component of the health system, they are the reason why systems exist. A deep understanding of the individuals and population characteristics, together with the capacity to influence their behaviors, is essential for the success of health systems. Fifth, benefit package. Through them, societies define, implicitly or explicitly, what health care and population services are available to the population and under what conditions. Six, critical inputs to the health system. To function, the health system requires qualified human resources for health and a sophisticated array of technologies and supplies that include pharmaceutical products, medical devices, and medical supplies. Human resources for health constitute the central pillar of the health system, and we will have a separate episode exclusively on HIH. Health systems are, in essence, people serving people. Finally, the health system needs to be able to influence demand for health services. More than a specific function, this capability is determined by most of the components of the health system. The system description we just reviewed is one I use the most in my country work. As I mentioned earlier, there are many other good health system frameworks. There are five that I use also from time to time. See the references in the graph. I strongly advise you to take a good look at them. I also recommend to follow other YouTube channels, such as Global Health by Greg Martin or Healthcare Triage by Aaron Carroll. In Transforming Health Systems, I will be sharing with you my experience and perspectives. I do not pretend that they are the only ones or the best, they are mine. There are many experienced experts and practitioners in this field. We tend to agree a lot. We also have some different perspectives. I invite you to be curious, explore as many experiences as you can, check the references I will be posting in each of the episodes. Next episodes will include reviews of health systems objectives, of the stewardship function, and of systems financing. Please do share your comments and questions and your suggestions with me for topics that you would like me to address in the future episodes. Welcome again to Performance Health Systems. Thank you for joining and see you next time.